Welcome back everyone. So as promised, uh, I'm continuing to make the guide for question two of paper five. And this video is going to deal with the first part where you have to rearrange the equation to find the expression for the gradient and the y-intercept in question number two. So let's jump into the screen and look at the basics for that concept first. The first thing that you need to do is understand the basics of the straight line equations and the straight line graphs. So if you plot a graph of a quantity y against x, then the straight line equation for that will be y is equals to mx plus c. This part is plotted on the y-axis as obvious. This part is plotted on the x-axis. What you're left with, which is multiplied by this part, is going to be your gradient of the straight line. This is your straight line on the graph and this will then be your intercept. And intercept is what uh, is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis or what we call this is the y-intercept. All right, gradient also has another name. You can call it the slope to easily understand it. So that is how steep the graph is. Gradient can be positive or negative depending on the type of graph. So for example, this blue line has a negative gradient. Anyways, now let's look at the first example from the past paper and see how to solve this one. So the equation that you're given is this. And before starting to rearrange this and trying to find the expression for gradient, you need to understand and uh, read the question very carefully. So first you need to understand that f from this equation is plotted on the y-axis and 1 over l from this equation is plotted on the x-axis. So I'll write down the equation. I'll write down the equation of the straight line which is y is equals to mx plus c but you can see that the equations don't look very similar. So write down your own equation below that. You don't really need to rearrange this equation and the reason for that is your y is already on the left hand side. f already is on the left hand side and is the subject of the equation so you don't have to do anything to it. So this part 1 over l is plotted on the x-axis and what you have to do is just separate this from the rest of the expression. So I'll do that 1 over 2 into t upon mu and then 1 over l. You can see there is nothing added to it so I'm just going to write a plus 0 and if you now compare this with y equals m x plus c you will be able to easily recognize the gradient and the y-intercept. So first of all the y-intercept is 0 and it's not even required in the question. This thing was plotted on the x-axis, this was plotted on the y-axis. This expression in brackets becomes my m. So my gradient is 1 over 2 under root t over mu. That is the answer to the first part. Now let's look at another example. This is your equation. And again, reading the question carefully, v square is on the y-axis and this is on the x-axis. Again, we have to find the expression for the gradient. So what I'll do is, I'll bring my v square, which is to be plotted on the y-axis, on the left-hand side. So this will become v square equals m over m plus m. into g and then 2h is also brought in on the other side. Now once you rearrange this and then compare this with y is equals to mx plus c, again you will see that there is no intercept. So no intercept but you can see that this part inside the brackets is plotted on the x-axis v square is plotted on the y-axis so the remaining part of the equation this is inside the print brackets this becomes my gradient so the answer to my gradient will be 2gh very simple let's look at one more example from these types of equations so we have this equation v over e is to be plotted on y-axis and 1 over q is to be plotted on the x-axis Again, rearrange your equation such that whatever is to be plotted on the y-axis comes to the left-hand side and is the subject of the equation. So I'll write V over E and then it becomes minus R into 1 over P plus 1 over Q. 
I'll multiply r with whatever is inside the bracket. So this will become minus r over q minus r over p. Now you can see that v over e is already there on the y-axis. And let me just multiply a small one here, which is not going to make any difference to the equation. So this one over q is plotted on the x-axis. So whatever is being multiplied by one over q inside the red brackets becomes my gradient. So that becomes my m. And this entire thing becomes my c, the y-intercept. And I can write down both these answers. So minus r is the gradient and minus r over p becomes my y-intercept. Now another thing that we need to understand is that there are exponential equations as well for which we have to draw a straight line graph. An exponential equation is such that your variable will be actually given as a power in the equation. And if you plot x and y on the graph, you will never get a straight line graph this way. So you have to use logs. You have to apply logs to the equation in order to get a straight line graph. Now, your cue for applying logs in question two will be very simple because in the question, it will be written that a graph of LG X versus LG Y or etc etc is plotted on the graphs. So you will easily get an idea of what log to apply in the equation. Now let's try and understand what logs are. If I say 5 to the power X is equal to 25, then what should be X? Well, you should be able to guess the answer to this one. X should be 2. So 5 is raised to the power 2, then you will get the answer x is equal to 2 but this same equation can be written in a similar way and that is using logs what I can say is if I have a log to the base 5 and here I can write x and this here I will write 25 so this log is basically asking the same question what power should 5 be raised to that is the unknown power x so that you get the answer 25 and the answer to that will also be x is equal to 2 so you can see that this equation and this equation can be interchangeably used and they are just a different form of the same thing. Now there are two special types of logs that you should know. One is the log to the base 10. So a log that always has the base 10 is this one. You write it like this LG. So if I want to write log to the base 10 5, I will just write LG 5 instead of log to the base 10 and then 5 because it is understood that this log has the base 10. Another one is the natural log which has the base to the number e and this is written like this. So if I want to write log to the base e and then 5, what I can simply write is ln 5 which is basically understood that the natural log will always has the base e. So these are the two logs, the special types of logs that we will be using to rearrange most of the equations. In order to rearrange uh, equations where you have to use logs, you need to first understand logarithmic identities. First logarithmic identity that you should know is if you have a situation like this, you can actually expand it and write it like this. Or another identity is this one. And in this situation, you can actually write it like this. Another situation that you have is you can write m in the numerator but now you have to change the sign. Another very useful identity is that if you have log and then m is raised to the power a, well, what you can do with its a is actually bring it as the coefficient of log. So a multiplied by log and then it's m. One more very important thing with these special types of logs is remembering their base. So if this is the situation, then I know that the log has the base equal to 10 and the number in the log is also equal to 10. So when the number and the base are equal, the log is actually equal to 1. Same thing can be applied for ln as well. Natural log has the base e and the number in the log is also equal to e. So I can actually write ln e equals 1. So remembering these identities and applying them on the equations, we can rearrange them very easily. Let's look at the first example of an equation where you have to apply the log. In this equation, you have to plot lgt on the y-axis and lgl on the x-axis. 
first apply log on the both sides and why i'm applying lg and not ln because the question says so you can see that lg and lg is written here so this becomes lgt and this becomes lg al to the power b now i can expand the right hand side by applying the first identity so this will become lgt and on the right hand side it will be lga plus lg l to the power b this b can actually become the coefficient so this will become lgt and now i'll write this second expression first because that includes x of the equation so i'll write b lg l plus lg a now it's very easy to compare this to y is equals to mx plus c if you can see c is your intercept so this becomes lg a and since LGL is plotted on the x-axis then B becomes your gradient so that will be B and that is the answer to the first part let's look at another example at another example but this equation is not an exponential one you can see that 2 and 3 are in the power but it's not the variable which is uh, in the power included in the power of the equation so it's not definitely not an exp exponential equation but how do I know that I have to apply the logs well by reading the question carefully you can see that it says LGT has to be plotted on the y-axis and LGR has to be plotted on the x-axis. So I know that I have to apply logs, the log to the base 10 on both sides. So that is what I'll do. I'll do LGT square and LGKR cube. Now this 2 can actually become the coefficient and this log on the right hand side can be expanded. So this will become 2 lg t and this one will become lg k plus lg r cube again you can see that this cube can come and become the coefficient of the expression so i have 2 lg t and then i'll write 3 lg r first because that includes x and the gradient and then lg k will be written last another thing that i need to do is divide this 2 on the left hand side on the right hand side so i have lgt on the left hand side only so this will become over 2 and this will also be divided by 2 now i can compare this to y is equals to mx plus c and you can see that this part becomes my intercept this part becomes my gradient and lgr is plotted on the x-axis lgt is plotted on the y-axis so m becomes 3 over 2 and c becomes lgk divide by 2 one last example before we end the video and this one is a little different because you will see that the x uh, the exponential equation has e in it as well and whenever this number is there it's always desirable to use natural logs rather than the normal logs and you will see that while reading the question they say that ln r is plotted against x so this is plotted on the y-axis and this is plotted on the x-axis. Again, let's apply logs on both sides, but this time it will be natural logs. So I'll do ln r and ln r0 into e to the power minus rho n x. Now you can see that the right hand side still can be expanded. So that will become ln r0 plus ln e to the power minus rho and x and on the left hand side we have the same thing this power can become the coefficient of the log so i'll have ln r and then i'll write this expression first the second one first because that includes the x and the intercept so this will become minus rho into n into x and then it will be multiplied by ln e but ln e equals one so i don't need to write it so I'll just move on to the next expression, which is ln r naught. Now this can be compared with y equals mx plus c again. You will see that this expression becomes my intercept. So I'll write down the answer for my intercept ln r naught. x was here. So the rest of the stuff, which is multiplied by x becomes my gradient. 
and this is plotted on the y-axis. So my gradient will be minus rho into n and that's it. We have solved all the examples.